Well, Teresa, Indiana has been at this a long time, and you've been seeing all sides of this. Can you talk a little bit about where, you, where it started, where it is now, and some of that process piece? Sure. First of all, I want to say how delighted I have been that today's sessions have been really focused on student-centric issues. It's really about how we can improve the performance and success of students. But I often speak of this in terms of shared responsibility, and this is a little bit different conversation because this is a lot about what we incent at the institutional level. And uh, we could spend a lot of time talking about you know, the history in Indiana or the rationale for doing it or the particular metrics that we've used, and I'll mention some of that. Uh, but I understand very well that each of our states have complex higher education financing systems. We have unique political uh, arrangements and leader, leadership that matters. And so I'm, I'm very aware of the fact that these conversations are not new. We've been talking about performance funding. And depending on the state in which you reside, you may be far along on these discussions already. So I don't want to insult your current intelligence on this. And I don't want to, I don't want to talk about Indiana's story alone. But I will share just a couple, couple tidbits, I think. Um, we have been around this since about uh, 2003. And we have continued to refine our performance metrics. Um, but it's very difficult to do this because what we're striving to do is have a balance between consistency so that institutions know what they're really striving to reach and legitimate concerns that have come about in terms of how we have done that. So even now, we are looking again at the metrics. Um, but for us, and going back to Dennis's comments about starting with a state goal, much of this came out of our strategic plan in Indiana called Reaching Higher. And probably like many of you, we were focused on increasing the educational attainment of Hoosiers and looking at a host of ways in which we could do that. It seemed to make a lot of sense to us to pay for what we value and to look at something beyond just those enrollment counts and how we could do that. Um, we started, interestingly enough, in Indiana with a research component, which actually incented institutions that were able to draw down more third-party uh, systems of pay for the, for the research institutions. But from that, it quickly became apparent to the, to the commission members that what they really wanted to look at the most was degree attainment. And for us, that focused on a change in the number of degrees, a change in low-income degrees, and a change in on-time degrees. At the same time, we were having the discussion of transitioning from a system of paying for enrolled credit hours to successfully completed credit hours. Now, I'm very much aware of that in many ways that is a proxy for growth still because primarily those institutions that are growing are going to benefit the most from that. But for the first time, we did have a sliver of performance in even that because you had to successfully complete that credit hour. So um, we have learned a few things, and we're still learning along with you. But um, I think starting with this state goal, recognizing that uh, you need to build support when possible, it's really nice if this idea for performance funding comes from higher education institutions and your commissions. Uh, it can be done springing from legislative bodies, and you certainly want the support of that. Certainly helps to have the support of the governor. Um, but I do think, ideally, it springs from the higher education community. And if it doesn't, at the very least, you have to build strong support from that community from the very beginning. So at the end of this last legislative session, when we uh, increase the amount of money that we put in. We went to um, $61 million a year in Indiana for performance metrics, which doubled the amount that we had put in any other time. The first thing that I did after the session was circle around to meet with the presidents of the institutions again uh, to talk to them about how they felt about it, what we needed to do going forward. So that kind of ongoing responsibility that you give to the institutions to frame the metrics I think is very important. I think it's very important to keep this incentive for at-risk populations. We've spent a lot of our time talking today about the, the new majority uh, student, what we need to do to, to make sure that educational opportunities are delivered differently. And so to the degree that you use your performance metrics to do that, I think that's very important as well. Um, you really need to make the money, money meaningful uh, just to put a sliver of money out there. It, it can be disregarded very easily. And I still think we have a very small amount. We actually have 5% of our higher education budget in our last appropriations going to performance metrics. Now keep in mind, we've been building that into our base. So we have closer to 12% of our higher education budget overall coming to being uh, divided based on performance metrics. So you have to make the, the money meaningful at some level. 
and I think it's really important that you continue to recognize mission differentiation in the way that you do these metrics. You must acknowledge the difference between community colleges and regional campuses and research institutions. They all have to have a fair chance to compete for those dollars, but they will do it in a very different way. And then finally, I think it's very important to remember that no matter what the economic circumstances are, that you have to continue to hold true to that policy. So even when you don't have more money, which is the way many states start with performance metrics, if you believe that performance is important and you want to reward that, then you need to be willing to look at your base as well and not back off from performance metrics when times get tough.